Hi, my name is Sabrina Flores, and today I will be presenting on the topic of the new definition for functional food by the Functional Food Center. This chapter focuses on how functional food has been defined, the necessity of a standard definition, and the rationale behind Functional Food Center's new definition. 2000 years ago, Hippocrates said, let food by, be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. The Functional Food Center has taken this advice seriously and endeavors to discover and de disseminate information about how specific foods actually do act as medicine in the body. These foods are known as functional foods. The tools needed to discover and develop these food products come from food science, nutrition, and medicine. However, the definition of exactly what constitute what con constitutes a functional food varies widely across the globe, which has led to a general sense of confusion among the general public, health professionals, and government officials. A standard definition for the functional food for functional food promotes essential communication between experts, the government, and the consumer that are necessary for their research, development, and promotion. The lack of a standard definition, on the other hand, has led to problems like the meaning of functional foods being altered, to ambiguous food labels, and even loss of scientific legitimacy. The Functional Food Center therefore believes a new definition must be established and will result in better food policies, better funding for nutrition research, greater legitimacy and innovation globally, and the dispelling of public misconceptions surrounding functional foods. Since its establishment in 1998, the Functional Food Center has been working to develop a definition for functional foods that will be accepted by the FDA in order to create effective functional food products. The Functional Food Center continues to advance the definition as more research on functional foods and bioactive compounds is done. At the moment, the Functional Food Center has proposed a new definition which states that functional foods are natural or processed foods that contain biologically active compounds, which in defined effective non-toxic amounts provide a clinically proven or documented health benefit utilizing specific biomarkers to promote optimal health and reduce the risk of chronic or viral diseases and manage their symptoms. On the coming slides, we will examine the key parts of this definition. As we learn more about the power of that about the power that functional foods hold, it is important for Functional Food Center to continue updating the definition to be as reliable and specific as possible to aid in its ability to become official. The former definition specified utilizing specific biomarkers for the prevention, management, or treatment of chronic diseases or, or its symptoms. However, the most recent advancement reflects a shift in the focus from chronic and viral disease treatment and prevention to promotion of optimal health, risk reduction, and management of symptoms. With this change, the Functional Food Center clarifies that they understand functional foods will never replace conventional medicine in terms of disease treatment. Rather, there will always be an intersection of the two in order to generate the best outcomes for diseased individuals' health. Moreover, this definition promotes the possibility of involvement from the food industry in research and development. Creating a standardized definition of functional foods means that functional food product development would become more effective and ultimately end up having large impact on chronic and viral diseases worldwide. Functional food developments could start being used for the management of symptoms associated with chronic and viral diseases and would ideally not be viewed as a drug or a medicine, but rather a functional food. By agreeing to a standardized definition of functional foods and establishing functional food science as a distinct field in life sciences, functional food products can be created and trusted by the public. This creates a whole new category of symptom management and risk reduction for chronic and viral diseases. Establishing a de de definitive meaning for functional foods will also help to formally introduce them to global markets, especially since knowledge and beliefs about functional foods have, have been found to impact the purchase of these foods. 
Ironically, however, those who believed they were knowledgeable about functional foods were more likely to view them with skepticism. This may be the result of flawed consumer self-research, which implies the possibility of widespread misinformation being disseminated by the, by the media. However, belief in a food's health benefits leads to acceptance of the new food. All of these points further emphasize the importance of a standard definition for functional foods. In order to understand the uniqueness of the functional food center, functional food definition, some of the terms in the definition should be further explained. Food in this definition refers to components of a normal diet for optimized nutrition. Examples of the definition include oranges or bran flakes, but not pills or capsules. The new definition also relies on the identification and measurement of bioactive compounds as the mechanism by which functional foods provide health benefits. The effect of these bioactive compounds are measured using biomarkers, indicators in the body that give off signals in tissues, organs, or systems in response to bioactive compounds. Examples of biomarkers are blood sugar, cholesterol, hormone levels, and others. Measuring the bioactive compound effects on biomarkers determines the compound's health benefits, the mechanism of action that causes these benefits, and also reveals the compound's activity in the body, which can take place on multiple levels. Now, we will move on to discuss the steps necessary to bring functional foods to market. A unified definition allows for a step-by-step -step process to be developed in which, in which potential functional foods are researched, strict trials are presented showing efficacy and safety, and functional food products are officially established to be marketed to the public. The Functional Food Center has developed its own 14-step cycle to show this progression from research to production. Here's a chart depicting and summarizing those steps. We will dive into the details of each step in the remainder of the presentation. First, the goal of the functional food product must be established. Specifically, the data of recent or past studies using history, ethnobotany, anthropology, archeology, span and other fields that may give us insight into potential applications of functional foods must be explored. The goal needs to be specific, such as, for example, alleviating certain symptoms or restoring balance to diseased or imbalanced areas of the mind, brain, and body. After establishing a specific goal, literature reviews must be conducted to determine the relevant bioactive compound that effectuates the goal. With respect to functional foods, the Functional Food Center states that bioactive compounds or secondary metabolites are molecules in food, usually in small amounts that act synergistically to benefit health. Third, an initial dosage of the bioactive compounds should be developed in order to perform or present preclinical trials in vitro and in vivo. This dosage will likely change throughout the whole process. Researchers need to uncover the mechanism or pathway of the bioactive compounds' positive health effects. For example, bioactive compounds in bananas provide an antioxidant effect on the body. The specific mechanism is that these compounds work to delay or prevent the oxidation or free radical formation of cells. One of the most important steps is finding the biomarkers associated with the mechanism or pathway. The biomarker is important because it allows researchers or scientists to quantify data that can be tested and measured. Without these biomarkers, we cannot use the scientific method to determine if there are significant results and we cannot provide the most efficacious product to the public. An example of the measurable biomarkers can be seen in health benefits of the cacao bean. Cacao beans are technically not beans or legumes, but rather the seeds of the fruit of the of the Theobroma cacao tree. This superfruit has been shown to lower cholesterol levels, reduce resistance to insulin, insulin, and improve insulin sensitivity in healthy, obese, and insulin-resistant individuals. Sometimes, when choosing a food vehicle to administer the bioactive compounds, researchers and scientists alter existing products such as 
adding or enriching them with vitamins, minerals, or other food products. There are a few different reasons for this, such as making a product more nutritious, making them more desirable for consumers, or even for environmental and economic benefits. One study, for example, conducted how adding pumpkin pulp to wheat bread could bring about these benefits. The pulp provided in the bread, the pulp provided the bread with potentially bioaccessible phenolics, especially with peptides. Furthermore, the pulp significantly en enriched the bread with potentially bioaccessible angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. In the development of a functional food product, proper preclinical trials should be conducted or presented through research. An example of this comes from Serum and colleagues who tested the effects of six different berry extracts, blackberry, black raspberry, blueberry, cranberry, red raspberry, and strawberry, and their ability to inhibit the growth of human oral, breast, colon, and prostate tumor cells and induce apoptosis in vitro. This study gives credence to furthering the research in vivo with animals to test for the same positive effects. Once preclinical trials reveal promising or significant results, clinical human trials can be carried out. Chen and colleagues in 2012 demonstrated a, a proper human clinical trial with their research on how freeze-dried strawberry powder significantly reduced the risk of esophageal cancer in high-risk populations. In this clinical trial, the researchers were able to adjust and find the proper human dosage to have the desired effects. Currently, the FDA authorizes statements or health claims made on food and food components that indicate a relationship between the food, an active ingredient, or a compound in a disease. This process requires significant agreement among the scientific community and a series of evidence in clinical or obs observational studies to show a true relationship. The Functional Food Center emphasizes, however, the importance and the need of a bioactive compound on the label. This, fundamental, this is fundamental in the entire process of establishing a functional food product. Marketing is also an important step and one that may be carried out by a separate team. Just as research is imperative in the preclinical and clinical trials, it is also important for the marketing process. There needs to be a balanced strike between educating the public of potential health benefits as well as showcasing a product worth purchasing by a variety of populations. After marketing, epidemiological studies need to be conducted to determine the functional food product's efficacy, dosage, and safety in an uncontrolled, non-laboratory environment. This step is crucial and will help build trust for the public. For example, olive oil has been regarded as a healthy fat and cooking oil consumed largely in the Mediterranean diet. A large review of articles in investigated the numerous epidemiological studies surrounding the health benefits of olive oil consumption. This review paints a more accurate picture of the true health benefits of olive oil in a real world uncontrolled environment, such as strengthening the claims that it has cardioprotective benefits. Next, approval from a trusted third part party agency and governmental agency is key. This step continues the trust building process for consumers and the public. All data needs, a, needs to be properly evaluated. The final two steps of developing a functional food product include release to market and aftermarket research. In order to gain the most desirable results from post-market research, it is important to continue marketing even once the product has been released. The higher the consumption rates, the more significant the aftermarket research results are. These kinds of studies allow for continued modification of the functional food product to best meet consumers' health benefits. After, market research and epidemiological studies are very time, consumer, time consuming and costly. Therefore, they can create a significant hurdle to establishment of the functional food product. Continuing to perform aftermarket research to monitor the potential gap between the controlled studies and how the functional food product actually affects individuals' health and relevant biomarkers is crucial. 
This important last working step ensures the product will be refined to maximize efficacy, increase safety, and help, help future products potentially using the same or similar bioactive compounds and biomarkers. Finally, after completion of all the previous steps listed, the functional food products can be established. Now, after reviewing all the steps, this chart, which I showed earlier in the presentation, should now make a little bit more sense. There are many critical steps that the Functional Food Center has prioritized in the development of functional food products and bringing them to market. In conclusion, there are a few important pointers to take away from this presentation. First, a standardized definition for functional food is needed to help regulate policy, legitimize and promote research and educate the public. Second, the functional food definition of functional the functional food center definition of functional food is unique, highlighting a concept of bioactive compounds and the use of biomarkers, which allow researchers the ability to confirm or deny health benefits of the food. Lastly, Foshu in Japan can be used as a model for government regulation. Focus must be not only in regulating the food itself, but also on the background and experience of functional food scientists. This concludes the presentation for today. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed.